Hi everyone, it's Jacqueline. So today we're going to be thinking about what makes a good IA research question. So there are a number of things that will contribute to a good question. Firstly, it has to have a clearly defined scope. The narrower the scope, the more focused your investigation will be. Now, that doesn't mean go so narrow that you don't have a lot to investigate or there's not enough sources. You know, don't look at a specific day in history, look at a specific time period. So if we take the example of Hitler's rise to power, perhaps you could look at the period from 1929 to 1933. So you'd have a nice four year period there. Following on from that, you need a question that's focused in terms of time frame, geography and event. So time frame, again, if we take the example of Hitler's rise to power, the time frame would could be 29 to 33. The geography would be Germany. The event would be Hitler's rise to power. It has to be a debatable question. There is no point in asking a question to which there can only be one answer. So, for example, if you were to ask, was Gorbachev important in the end of or towards the end of the Cold War? Again, that's kind of an obvious like it's it's a question with an obvious answer of course he was important um, so there's no point in asking a question like that now the more general points you must be able to answer the question within the word limit of 2200 words but bear in mind section one and section three are not where you're focusing on answering the question so actually you only have, say, around 1,200 to 1,300 words to actually answer the question. So it has to be answerable in within the word count. Uh, not quite finally, but second to last point, it must focus on something which happened at least 10 years ago. And finally, you need to ensure there are enough accessible and relevant sources for the topic you pick. Okay, so let's have a look at some research questions and think about which question is the, the best out of these and what are the problems with the other ones. So to what extent was Mao's launching of the Cultural Revolution ideologically driven? Okay, so we have a clearly defined scope in that this, this candidate is looking at the Cultural Revolution. That's also an event that has been picked out. A time frame has not been given, so this could be improved by adding in the dates. To what extent was Mao's launching of the Cultural Revolution 1966 to 76 ideologically driven? It could be improved further by adding in the country in which this is happening. So to what extent was Mao's launching of the Cultural Revolution 1966 to 76 in China ideologically driven? That will improve this question. Is the question debatable? Yes, it is. Um, there's going to be a clear debate around whether the Cultural Revolution is launched for ideological reasons or maybe other factors could be for personal reasons, for political reasons. So it is a debatable topic. Is it answerable within the word count of just over a thousand words? That's always going to be a challenge no matter what, but yes, it should be possible to answer this question. Um, is it, did it happen more than 10 years ago? Yes, the Cultural Revolution happened more than 10 years ago, so that's fine. And are there accessible and relevant sources? It's tricky when you look at a topic like the Cultural Revolution in China, because of course China is very, very restrictive in terms of discussing this topic. So it may be a challenge to find accessible, relevant sources, but there should be some out there, so it should still be possible. So overall, this question isn't bad, but there are a few areas for improvement. How about this question? What happened during the Cold War? Okay, so does it define a scope? Kind of. Um, the Cold War is the scope, but the Cold War itself lasted from 47 to 1991. So it's almost half a century long, and that really is just too long a time period for a research question or a research topic. It doesn't give geography, but this is a, obviously the Cold War is a world topic or a global topic, so it's not really necessary in that case. And the event is obviously the Cold War, so that's okay. 
Uh, when it comes to the question of if, if, is it debatable, um, it's not debatable. It's just asking what happened during the Cold War. There's really nothing you can debate there. So it's not good in that sense. Also, it wouldn't be possible to answer within the word limit. It did happen more than 10 years ago, so that's fine. And yes, there will be plenty of accessible and relevant sources for the Cold War. But this question just doesn't work overall because it leads you or it leads the candidate down a narrative path. And you do not want that. You want to be approaching um, your IA from an analytical standpoint. OK, final question. To what extent did the Abyssinian crisis, 1935 to 6, influence Hitler's remilitarization of the Rhineland in Germany, 1936? OK, so here we have a very, very clearly defined scope. Um, they're really this candidate is going to be looking at the events of these, these two years, essentially 1935 to 1936. They are focused in terms of the time frame, therefore. The geography is mentioned. They're looking at um, the Abyssinian crisis and they're looking at Germany and the event as well. Well, yes, they have two events essentially that they're considering the Abyssinian crisis and also the remilitarization of the Rhineland. So, is this a debatable question? Um, it is debatable in the sense that it's asking what led to Hitler's remilitarization of the Rhineland. And so the candidate who's approaching this question, they're going to research the Abyssinian crisis as well as alternative factors, balance them up to decide whether the Abyssinian crisis played a greater role in influencing Hitler's remilitarization of the Rhineland than the other factors, or whether there are other factors that were more influential. So it is debatable. Is it answerable within the word count? Again, it's going to be a challenge, but that's always going to be the case. It should be possible to answer within the word count. It happened more than 10 years ago, of course, and there are likely to be accessible and relevant sources on both the Abyssinian crisis and the remilitarization of the Rhineland. However, it may be hard to find sources that directly focus on the Abyssinian crisis crises influence on Hitler's remilitarization of the Rhineland. So that could be a challenge for this question, but otherwise it's pretty good. Okay, so these are a few things that you really need to avoid when you are coming up with your research question. So make sure you don't ask questions that are too easy to answer. So yeah, the example I gave earlier, did Gorbachev play an important role during the end of the Cold War? Everyone knows he did, so this question is redundant. Secondly, don't ask a question that will lead to a narrative answer. For example, what were the causes of the Cold War? That's that's a question that's very likely to le lead to a narrative response. Okay, so the final thing to really consider here are the useful command terms. So try to use one of these to help frame your question, whether it's to what extent, analyze, assess, compare and contrast, discuss, evaluate or examine. One of these will, you know, they're going to, these kind of command terms are going to lead you down that analytical route when you are writing your investigation. So make sure you use one of these terms. How far actually is one that I didn't put in here, but how far is also appropriate. Try not to begin your question with something like what or why. Um, these are not going to lead you kind of into the depth that is looked look which is um which is looked for when it comes to an IA investigation. Okay, so I hope that's helped you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I look forward to